My next big adventure is building my second pizza oven. And I'm gonna kinda do a rough guide on how to do it, but honestly, it's pretty simple. And once you get the right tools, it makes it a lot easier. And for instance, today we were able to pour in some concrete in our stand and that's it. Stay tuned. This is a steel frame my dad fabricated and what you can see is some um, three by three steel posts for the main structure and then one inch across underneath and then two by three angle iron on the top and I believe he just used a gas welder to get all the joints and then we cut the corners at the front just to make sure that it wasn't as big as it needed to be. Here's all the supplies we needed for the concrete. We have cement board and what we'll end up doing is cutting that and fitting it in to the base and then add the rebar so that way it's reinforced and you can't see it but the way we cut the cement board there's a little area with the black tape you can see it there and that ends up causing some problems later which we didn't think about but we tied all the rebar and made sure that it would be supportive of the concrete and we ended up mixing the concrete by hand which let me tell you is pretty big chore I mean I'm only 140 and yeah it was it was rough oh yeah there's my dad helping with mixing and we found out that using a hoe as opposed to a shovel was definitely a lot easier to mix and some of you might already know that but we didn't so there is it done and we just use a trowel to kind of finish the surface and it ended up looking pretty good but you can kind of see from the video that it was sunken in a, a little bit and initially we thought we just didn't have enough concrete but later on we found out that it was bowing underneath because where that seam was it was just supported with duct tape and it just didn't end up being enough. So there's the haul of all the fire bricks and we loaded it into the back one wheelbarrow at a time. Oh man, I forget how many bricks it was, but it was quite a lot. And here's us getting the hearth. And I believe the pattern is hemming bone, feather bone, something along the lines of that. We got our brick saw going on, and I got that from Harbor Freight a couple years ago. Used the coupon. You can see how we're finishing up the shape of the hearth, and that's the most important step. And we didn't use a lot of people will use a board underneath just to insulate it, but on our last oven it didn't affect the heat of the bottom of the pizza. We used styrofoam to make the entry and then you can see the bricks to level that and what would they do on top of that is add a play sand and mold it that way. And we're kind of designing the brick patterns and we did vertical a brick and a half high and then for the angle, you can see on that brick that we just cut the corner. And our idea was that we could save some cut bricks because it's a lot of work. And we could fill the gaps behind the brick with mortar. That's my dad going around the whole thing. And it lays on top of the sand quite well. And the white post was the point we were referencing. All the bricks cut, inserted, and now we're just filling the outside with more mortar just to make sure that 
the, all the heat is in there and the bricks are safe and secured and won't move. It's a six inch chimney and I got a 12 inch high pipe on top of it. It's double wide and it has a damper to control the heat coming in and out. Has a unique shape to it, kind of, I don't know, Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. And then the front of it, you can see those bricks protruding out. So we'll end up shaping it. There's the damper I was telling you about. On my last oven, I didn't have it and thought it would be cool to have it on this one just so day after pizza, I'm able to do some bread or at least cookies or something. So right, that, right there is the ceramic fiber blanket being wrapped in chicken wire. And we did one layer of one inch thick ceramic fiber blanket. And after that we stuccoed it, just a plain stucco mix and we, and there's it with the chimney and cap on. And this is inside. This is where you can see all the gaps and from our artistic masonry standpoint looks terrible, but I had some extra refactory, went in there and it was a late night, but I filled in the gaps as best as I could. And when you're building an oven, you wanna make sure that most of the fire bricks exposed as opposed to the mortar that's the top of the entry and for what we did it came out pretty good this is the dadalorian helping us build the pizza prep station with an old piece of granite that we used on the old table on my old pizza oven that i brought over to the new place and we're doing just a 45 degree angle on it and we'll cut the granite and we just used a grinder and you can see we fabricated that out of steel fits right in right next up to the pizza oven and right now while we're doing this the cement's curing and just giving time a chance and the welds aren't perfect but for a mig welder we did the best that we can and it fits great there's one of the curing days where I actually have a fire going and you can see that afterwards that a lot of the joints are fixed. And there's a couple with holes in them but when we were chiseling them out some of it came out but I know it's structurally sound. And the wood is mesquite. I live in southern Arizona so that's our source of wood. We can get pecan and white oak, but mesquite's more bang for your money. This is the paint on it, and we just went with the same paint of the house. That way, it kind of flows with the backyard, not a tension grabber from the neighbors. And it has a texture to it, which I'm happy with. It makes it look pretty cool. the same time our whole backyard got done in the background of the previous pictures you could see how it looked like a desert this is us getting the first pizza in it looks hot hot enough to cook a pizza everything's working like it should there's a pizza prep station that I built and right now this is the first pizza going in where they do a traditional margarita. And the dough I made was a three day rise. Use caputo flour, activated dry yeast, 
and salt and water, that's all it is. Drinking a home brew, because nothing goes better than pizza and home brew. And I'm just taking my time. I don't have a rush of orders, just enjoying making pizza dough, pizza, the whole thing, and my new backyard pizza oven. And I like that technique. It's kind of my one that I'm used to. The slap technique, it works, but you need a lot of dough just to not get any gaps in it. This is the sauce I use, and I'll make some videos on how to make some sauce. Pretty simple. I don't go crazy with it. But that shelf, we actually built the morning of the first debut, so we worked our butts off trying to get that done. And first day in, it was pretty smooth and really liked it. And just some fresh mozzarella, a little parmesan. And I know there's a great debate about basil before or after, but I'm also a barbecue guy, so I like charredness, so I put it on before. A little olive oil. And then you stretch it on the peel, and the perforated peels are nice because when you slide it under you can jab it like that and here she goes first one in looks really hot it is probably around 700 degrees there didn't cook as fast as I wanted it to but you can see the outer rim of the crust starting to puff up a little bit and then I'm about to get the peel and move it. Oh wait, gotta have some beer. And the nice thing is having that extra spot. I can put my thermometer, my beer. It's just engineering at its finest, let me tell you. All right, so first slide of the peel. Whip it around, get the other edge, let it do its thing. And you can see the soot on the crown of the oven right now. And that's just all the oils from the wood as it comes out. and. The way the oven's positioned, I'm going to build a door for it, so hopefully I can control the heat better so a lot of the heat isn't coming out. And right there you can see some of the charred bubbles or the leoparding of the pizza crust. And that usually comes in with the high hydration of pizza dough. And for this recipe I did a 70% hydration level. So it's really hard to work while you're making the dough, and I do the dough by hand, so your hands are really sticky and you got a lot of remnants on your hands, but after it's pretty saddled and broken in, then it just kind of falls off your hands, so to speak. The turning peel is probably my favorite tool of all the pizza utensils because not only can you move logs with it and position them to where you want them to be, you can get underneath the pizza and move it around pretty easily. The next couple of pizzas I made, I threw some more wood on there and it got up higher in temp. And it just cooked a lot faster. And for tonight, I was just cooking to my in-laws and my parents and my brother. So it didn't need a lot of wood. And right now I 
right now I'm doming it. It's just the term of lifting the pizza to the top where you get pretty hot. There it is. And I have a rack underneath just so the air cools underneath the bottom so it's not soggy. So yeah, all that work turned into that final product and pretty happy with it. A margarita pizza. And then there's the pizza prep station. My beautiful wife holding her favorite pizza. Jace and his olives and sausage pizza. That's the bonus pizza. Cohen and Janelle in front of the pizza oven. And that is a wrap. Please like and subscribe. Lots of new videos coming soon.